that, yeah. Okay, so let's get started. So the principle of this technique, I'm gonna use just normal plain drawing paper. And the principle of this technique is layering and layering and layering uh, so that we can build up. Uh, I need somebody else with the microphone off, one second. I need to go find where the noise is coming. Um, so the principle is that, okay, the principle is that we're gonna layer and layer and layer until um, we build up the image. And because each layer is very soft and very uh, faint, we can correct and correct and correct without having to erase the mistakes, which is a very good way of working on your sketches like when you're doing sketches or studies the best approach is to consider them as a process uh, and by that i mean that it doesn't have to be right on the first go you can try and try and try and then adjust as you go so i usually suggest to my students to like don't use the eraser like forget about the erasers just work with many dynamic searching lines in uh, please people try to keep your microphone uh off uh one second where is the microphone oh okay thank you um so uh what i was saying so by in this way, without trying to get it right at the first try, but building up, it makes it like you can learn more things because if you do a, draw a line and you feel like it's the wrong line and you erase it completely and try to draw the right line, you don't have the reference from for what was there before. We're gonna use the layers to try to use all the tools we have to achieve the, the drawing we want uh, without like using the mistakes to build up the most accurate result. So the first thing that we're going to do, the first layer is quite a structural one. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go from each edge of the figure and connect them. So this is the foot up to the edge of the uh, knee. And then here is the edge of the head. And then from the edge of the head to the elbow here and then the diagonal line connecting everything so this is wait, let me see if i can raise my camera like a tiny bit more perfect so now everything fits better uh so this is the general space that my figure is occupying now in this space i'm gonna draw the structure so i can start with the head and then follow the line of the spine then I'm going to look for the line of the shoulder, so between the two shoulder peaks, and then try to connect these with the bottom of the rib cage. And then, sorry, I need to go around to find who is not muted because I can't hear. I don't know, my, my laptop has a weird feedback that if there are stray microphones, it really screeches and it makes it hard for me to talk. Um, okay, so from here, then we move on to the hips. So here is where the hips are. And then we can attach the limbs using kind of the advanced stickman mode. So joint of the shoulder, then where the joint of the elbow is above the hips, and then the joint of the wrist and then the hand. You can draw it like a mitten and then here the other shoulder down to the elbow which is kind of in line here and then there to the wrist and the other hand is hidden then we have this leg so the joint of the hip and then up to the knee and then down to the ankle and then here to the other foot and then we have on the other side we have the line where the other leg pokes around a little bit and on the head i also can differentiate from the part where the face is the ear and then the part where 
the rest of the backies. So we can start with this. This is going to be our layer one. I'm going to leave you a couple of minutes to do this. Okay, so let's go to the next step. Now, between each layer, what we're going to do is like smooth over the page with the paper. So take the kitchen paper and fold it in a way that is comfortable to handle for you. We're going to use this edge. And then you have to pick one consistent direction, which means that the one you choose now, you're going to use in every layer. And the other thing, it needs to be quite straight. Like we either do horizontal lines or vertical or 45 degrees diagonal, not rainbows, not curvy lines because they just look quite weird. 
I usually go for 45 degrees. So without too much pressure, you don't have to press hard. It needs to be enough pressure that you smudge what you have below. So I'm just gonna go and soften what I did before. And I'm not gonna go back and forth. I go only in one direction, okay? Only in one direction without pressing too hard. Then I put this away. I can still see a little bit of what I did before, so I can build up my process on top of that. We're gonna do the three-dimensional structure now on top of this. So we're gonna go back to the head, and like I was doing before, we're going to divide the front and then the back of the skull. Then we have the neck like this. And then we have the box of the rib cage. We can do it like this, a little bit geometrical. You see a little bit on the side there. And then I'm going to go ahead also the the box or the bucket or however you want to define it of the hips something like this there is the spine connecting them there is a little bit of torsion going on and then i'm gonna do the limbs and again i'm gonna do the joint and then connect them with cylinders so when you see them from the side the cylinder is kind of flat when you see them in for shortening, like for example here, I have the shoulder and then the cylinder of the arm here, then the elbow, and then this one, I see it in for shortening like this. So from the side, and then I'm gonna do the leg as well. So from here, and then cylinder of the leg. And remember that the whole figure is in foreshortening, so it is like this leg far away here, it's supposed to look smaller and the foot is supposed to look small, because we're looking at, at something that is further back in the distance, okay? Compared to, the, compared to this part that is closer to us, like this. And I can also keep marking a little bit the plane. We always remember to check this plane because it's the plane of the shadows and where the figure is laying. So you want it to be kind of like a line between these three points that is kind of consistent, okay? So let's do the second layer. Five minutes. Not less.
Okay, so we're now gonna go on the next step. So before going on to the next step, again, I take my paper towel, I go in the same direction softly without pushing too hard. I smooth down my previous layer. Okay. <laughs> there are these are all my finger stems. And now on this uh, structure, uh, I want to do one last thing before starting to work on the figure itself. Uh, we want to check with the negative space of the figure to see if the proportions are right and to, to shape it a little bit more. So I'm going to use now the charcoal on the flat side or the pastel on the flat side, and I'm going to go around the figure and shape the negative space and check mainly for the angles or like these small kind of shapes like this or like this specific angle between the arm and the elbow or like this specific angle here of the between the shoulder and the background and then on the other side the angle between the head and the other shoulder like this and then try to see the angle between this arm and this other arm and check if the inclination of that angle is okay there is a small empty space here and then i keep going and there is another triangle here between the leg and the lower the leg behind and it tells me that I put that leg a little bit too high so I can correct and it's actually here so there is this space between this leg and the glutes like this and then the angle here between the ankle and the foot and then again I can try to connect the shoulder going upwards to the knee so here the knee is probably a little bit higher and then i can check between the knee and the head and this seems to be in the correct space and then i can also just pull again this line at the bottom of the shadow connecting everything just to check that everything is in the right place so this is gonna be my next step just double check the negative space in the background. Five minutes to do this.
Okay, so again, we take our nice paper again, and then we swipe. It's important to put all this pigment and to swipe this like this much because it creates the background for us to build up or sculpting. Uh, so don't worry, like it's supposed to look like this. It's supposed to get darker and darker and layered and layered. So what are we going to do now is we're going to start looking for the um, some more defined contours so we can start shaping the details on the geometric structure that we drew before so we can draw the soft net, like the soft line of the head and like here where the hair is and then find here the edge of the shoulder then the arm then here the line of the back the line of the spine in the back the way they overlap and then here the arm following the negative space from before the forearm this corner and then on the other side drawing the other arm finding the other um, the arm underside and then on this side drawing the edge and on this side don't worry about these lines being perfect it doesn't really matter the hand i'm not gonna draw the fingers just the general position of the hand then here the leg and then getting down the edge of the foot again i don't have to draw the toes i just have to draw the outline then the underside of the leg with the shape of the muscle the underside of the glutes connecting here then here is the side there is this little piece of leg poking here and then a piece of the foot poking there and this is basically all that we need as contour lines don't worry about making them perfect because we're, we're gonna swipe this too so don't worry it's just like do some lines we're gonna soft them anyway hi Aishani just join hey. I wanted to ask if we could have a short recap we haven't done so far we did the structure and every time we went through the like we between each layer we swiped with a piece of paper and then did the next layer so the first thing we did was kind of like a stickman of the person and then over the stickman we did like kind of like um the volumes of the arm and everything and then we swiped and now we're then we did the background like negative space and then we swiped and now we're doing the contour and we're gonna swipe again so you can you can try and use a dry pastel or a dry piece of charcoal a very dry thing that you can swipe over drawing paper okay good Yes, perfect. You can use it sideways. If it's soft enough, it should work.
Okay, so let's go to the next step. We're gonna now take the piece again and soften. Remember not to press too hard. You want to be able to see what you layer there before. You just want it soft. And what we're going to do now is we're going to start applying some shadows. We're going to start layering the shadows. So I'm going to start and start put color where it's darker. So I'm going to do it here on the hair like this. And then on the back, upper side of the back, like this. And then here on the side of the scapula, and then in the middle part of the back, underside of the scapula, shoulder blade, and then here, then on the arm, the inside of the arm is darker. Then the forearm below as a projected shadow from the body. We're also gonna do the, the shadows here at the bottom. This is the projected shadow of the body, like this. And then I'm gonna go to the other shoulder. So there is a shadow here the side of the shoulder and then here and then the other shoulder blade like this and then going on the side wrapping around the glutes and then the projected shadow of the arm here the shadow on the arm itself around the elbow and then here to the side and then around the wrist in the hand and then projected shadow of this arm on the leg which connects with this other shadow it will be the shadow here on the underside and then the shadow on the underside of this other leg in the background and on the leg here and then around the, sh the, the ankle and again here projected shadow of this leg towards the rest of the body and connecting with the other shadows. And actually I have to hmm. Not. the head was a little bit weird okay five minutes apply your shadows
Okay. Shall we? Shall we? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna do the last swipe. After this, we we don't swipe anymore. We just do the highlights and the shadow point. So be delicate. Okay. It needs to be super, super, super soft because we we still want to see what we did below. It's just to smooth the edges of it. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is the shadow points. And the reason why we swiped one last time is because we want the shadow points to be uh, sharp and strong so they can, you know, shape the whole figure. So we're going to do the shadow points only where the shadow points, the keyword is point. So we want to do small uh details of exactly where the darker points are so usually close to folds or in places where one thing is touching another or overlapping with another one like here the hand or like here the edge of the arm touching the the leg in this point or like here the fold of this arm and the shadow below. So like this. Needs to be small points or like here, again, under between the leg and the, and the bottom, the, the, I don't know, the, the ground, the floor, whatever this is. And then here again, between the bottom of the back and uh, where the body is laying down like this and then following up here in this folder this corner and then again this fold and this corner here and then under the elbow and then where this arm is touching the floor like this, and then on the other side as well. This one is a little bit more like this, and then around the head, like slightly where the neck is, behind the ear, like this, and then a little bit on the other side of the head, and the hairline, just to mark it the other side of the hand here and see already with this it's the figure is coming out from the from the page and then i'm gonna take the eraser and you can use like i'm gonna use a hard eraser you can also use a kneaded eraser wrapped up they're both good i like to use this because so i can press harder to pull up more contrast and i'm basically gonna go and pull up pigment from the paper where the light edges is and for example here see it's important that this part it's not defined by a dark line 
it's defined by a light edge on the darkness of the background that I did before. And that's like, because reality doesn't really have contour lines. Contour lines are less symbolic approximations that we use, but when we want to render something, it's better rendered with, uh, with highlights and shadows, basically. Can clean up the eraser if it builds up too much dirt, and then again go where the light hits the edge of the figure, like here, on the, on this area of the collarbones, like this, and then here, close by on the neck, on the edge of the face, the cheekbone, the forehead, the tip of the ear. If your eraser doesn't have a sharp angle, you can also uh, cut it with a with a blade, like with a sharp blade, and cut it and and get a like small triangular shape of it that you can use to to do this. And then here I also have this part which is as a highlight on the side, there is like a bounce light, and then there is the other small highlight here under the arm. And see how it's coming out of the page like this, and then here is slightly lighter. So if in some areas for some reason you ended up putting too much pigment, you can now pull that pigment out with the eraser and sculpt the, the figure in the page. So you can do both the, the sharp light parts, but also the, the middle softer one. If you feel that you put too much shadow beforehand, you can now compensate and, and pull away some of that shadow. Okay, so you can you can modulate, you can sculpt, you can put uh, like you can add and and take away as as you prefer, even where is middle tones. So you can you can really modulate and use both the like like this, like we said, like here on the edge of the shoulder, you can be push harder and pull out more and make the highlight stronger, and then there are other areas like maybe here on the back that you can just press less hard with the eraser and just pull a middle tone out. So I encourage you to take your time now, like full 10 minutes to work on this step and just sculpt as much as you want with the, with the eraser. Like this. If you want, like, for example, I feel like we can also make the this shadow here, the shadow on the table a little bit stronger for contrast. So I'm just gonna maybe add a little bit more here now that everything else is balanced. Because it feels like grounds it a little bit more. Less floaty. Yeah, but try try to think about this scalp thing concept, like the fact that you we've been layering until now, and now we can just add the final touches to the whole thing and make it come out of the page as we want it. Mm. 
So take your time and then we're gonna do a round of checking, sharing, further questions and everything like that. Sorry, I, I muted myself. Could I ask a question? Uh, once, uh, well, I don't know where you are. Once oh, it's Audrey. Uh, that's okay. You don't have to look for me. I just answered. See, when you were doing this very important uh, highlights, I always felt that where the light shines, but in your particular case, uh, the light is shining from the upper left, I think, but we have the back as highlight, which makes the figure much more pronounced. How do you choose where to do your highlights with that eraser? I just like usually if you use, uh, by Laura, um, if you use a black and white picture, you can use the shades of gray uh, that you see in the picture, in the reference picture as a guideline. So if you look at, your ref at the reference picture, the lighter gray is where I went with the eraser here. And in the back, you can see that there is a lighter gray that it's similar to the one that you can see here. So I went a little bit because it got darker with the overlapping layers. So I usually use the tonal value. Like if you're working from a picture in color, you can turn it in black and white and have that as a support to your tonal value translation. I hope this answer your question. Um, yes, thank you. Okay, so uh, since there's a lot of you, uh, let's use the raise your hand option if you want to show what you've done and ask questions and just share a feedback. Uh, 